Hey there, thanks for tuning in. My name is John Vandeveer, and in the next approximately 10 minutes, I'd like to summarize for you the paper in front of you. This paper is recently authored by me and distributed through SSRN. It is a working paper, so comments are totally welcome. We'll unpack the title in a moment, but it's on the general topic of the ability to land a job on the basis of an alternative credential instead of the traditional college degree. So why do we care about this topic? I think there's at least three top level motivations. The first is an applied microeconomic motivation. This could apply to me, to you, or to people you know. And that is, is that we can help people get a job quicker and cheaper in some situations with a higher return on investment to education compared to the traditional college degree for many people. The potential positive impact to many individuals ladders up to a macroeconomic policy concern, which is that alternative credentials can be potentially used as a tool to combat the student debt crisis. Education policy is a far-reaching policy concern, and by positively improving enough people's lives, we can actually improve our national competitiveness. Third is an industrial concern that companies and employers will care about. Firms here would include some hiring policy guidance I have for any firm that's going to make hiring decisions, as well as some particular advice for private learning providers. Here's the materials and agenda. Here's some links. The SSRN paper is freely av available at the link. This slide deck is available. And then you can contact me, get all my social media access and what have you on my website, aftereconcom where I emphasize applying economics after you learn it. The agenda is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go through the paper, paper title, methodology, findings, and conclusions. So one segment of the title is the alternative credentials segment. What does this mean in a, in a word? Unaccredited. So here is the survey appendix, which is in the paper if you download it. And this block of text gives a elaborated definition of what I mean by alternative credential for the purposes of the survey. Here you can see the question wording and a good call out is that this has a focus on an entry level position. So the idea here is that if you're ever gonna be able to substitute an alternative credential for a degree, it's probably the lower levels of skill requirements and seniority. At the advanced levels, the executive levels, there's going to be a more onerous requirement for an accredited bachelor's degree or even a master's degree or higher. You can also see that this is a non-price measure. It is a 10 point Likert scale, and that's intentional. And this is sort of comparable to favorable, disfavorable in political polls or net promoter score, which is commonly used in business. Another important section is non-college graduate. This is an important section of the title and it's pretty straightforward. It just means someone that doesn't have a degree. We know that an individual can get a degree and then brush up on their technical skills with last mile training from technical boot camps. And we know that that's a really great investment, but that's not a case of substitutability. If we wanna be able to leverage a job then degree and leverage the employer tuition benefit to improve your ROI on the accredited degree, then we're gonna to need to have the job first. And so this is gonna to need to be a case of substitutability of credentials. Let's talk about hireability. You saw the question, so but let's dive a little more into what this means. It's technically an index of likeliness to extend a job offer. It can be modeled in a similar way to willingness to pay, but it's not a price measure and that's intentional. Here's the seven reasons that we avoid um, prices in particular. Feel free to re review those in detail. I'll call out two in particular. One is that we don't have to make assumptions about the price curve, the shape of the price curve. So wages can be backward bending, where you have a really high priced employee that's really talented, but you actually don't wanna hire him because he's too expensive. You can even have non-positive zero or negative wages, internships, and you can actually consider education to be a case of negative wages. Another concern here is principal agent problems, where people are talking about willingness to pay not of their own preference, but of that of their employer. So this adds statistical noise and it confuses the issue. I also have a bunch of respondents who have never been a manager. So asking them to make salary decisions is really difficult. Section of conformity and soft skills in the title. Basically, this is a result. It's the substantive gap that I identified, and then I plugged it into the title. So it turns out the alternatively educated individuals are weak on soft skills. Conformity is a gap that's identified, but it actually turns out to be a value add where we have some theoretical reasons to think that it would be a value negative. And so it turns out that a good explanation for weaker outcomes for alternatively educated individuals is an explanation from risk aversion by employers 
instead of a negative value signal. Conformity relates to the signaling model, model of education, which is one of the two more popular explanations of why employers will pay wages on the basis of a credential. The alternative is the human capital model. Uh, I prefer the signaling model in this study. In a signaling model, the questionnaire is a first-class citizen, and it's an idealized study design. In the human capital model, it would be best if I could actually measure your skill level. I could actually measure how quickly you run around a uh, Olympic track or throw a football. The questionnaire would be a second class citizen in a human capital model, but it's really ideal in a signaling model because the signaling model, we care about what the person actually perceives, the perceived value. Turning back to this result, the result of conformity and soft skills, this is actually fairly optimistic for alternative learners because now that they know the gap, they can supplement with specialized learning to address the stigma. And it can also be relatively easily overcome at interview time. Things just like dressing professionally, speaking clearly. Because the risk aversion is the preferred explanation of employer aversion, at interview time, if you can make it clear that you're not a negative outlier, then you stand a pretty good chance. You don't actually need to demonstrate that you're a rock star. You just need to demonstrate that you're not the negative outlier that they're really worried about. And here is uh, impression management. So stigma impression management techniques have been shown to work. And that's another reason to be optimistic about your ability to manage this stigma. Let's look at the methodology. This is an online questionnaire design. Specifically, I use Mechanical Turk to recruit survey participants. I use Survey Monkey to actually execute the survey. So uh, a participant will come in through Mechanical Turk, click a link, go over to SurveyMonkey, fill it out and submit it, then receive payment through Mechanical Turk. Cross-sectional ordinary least squares regression is the statistical analysis used to derive coefficients and explain relations on the basis of these independent factors like the skill gaps. And to address the concern of possible response pool bias in Mechanical Turk, I have a ton of sociological controls for age, gender, ethnicity, whatever you can think of. And then I have 13 quote unquote skills. Some of them are pseudo skills like attractiveness or personality traits. Findings, we already talked about some when we went through the title, but here's two more. One is I recommend learning provider curricula change. As I said, pseudo skills are another thing that I measure because they are important determinants of hireability but they're not really malleable. They're not really things that a learning provider could put into their curriculum. So one of these specifically would be the attractiveness halo. So it turns out that there's a really big attractiveness bias when making hiring decisions, and it has a halo effect onto the candidate's perceived skill levels across the board. So this is something that is important. You can see in figure two from the paper, which I've put here, but it's not something that I would really have an alternative learning provider try to supplement on. Where would I have them focus? Communication skills and teamwork. Project-based learning is a great thing that they can implement to improve some of those soft skills that employers see as an important miss. Let's go to conclusions. Conclusions for policy, here are six. Some of them are more aggressive, like stop subsidizing student loans at all. You get what you pay for, right? Second best would be open those to level the playing field to alternative providers. Um, and there's some more here. Evaluate skills rather than credentials for government employment is a nice one. For firms, hey, employers, let's hire for skills, not degrees. Private learning providers, I've talked about curricula change. And universities, partner with private learning providers to give credit for skills rather than time set in chairs. For individual consumers, last off, obtain alternative learning um, in high school if possible, even middle school. If not, consider a gap year, that's too risky. How about during your summer break? Let's try to get a job first and then work. Consider Guild Education partners like Walmart. You can get a job at Walmart while you're still in high school, and then you can go to college for as little as a dollar a day. Last, let's focus on soft skill development. Honestly, whether you get a college degree or an alternative credential, but specifically if you choose the latter. Thanks for tuning in. Um, thanks for watching, hopefully sharing, liking, subscribing. Uh, my channel is focused on economics, philosophy, programming, and games. So if that piques your interest, smash the subscribe button. Thanks for your time.